Hi students, in this video we will learn how to solve table completion questions in IELTS listening. Remember, the IELTS listening test has four parts each with 10 questions and lasts for 30 minutes in total. After that, you will then have 10 minutes to move your answers to the answer sheet provided. The total time duration is 30 minutes plus 10 minutes and there will be four sections, 10 questions per section. The part one is a general conversation between two people. Part two is a monologue with just one person talking about a general topic. Part three is an everyday conversation between two to three people. And part four is one speaker giving an academic lecture. Table completion in the IELTS listening tests are often more difficult than they should be. Table completion questions are gap fill questions that require you to fill in the missing words. The table will be made up of columns and rows containing information. Generally, tables categorize information, that is, they group pieces of information that are related in some way or share the same features. The subject matter could be almost anything, but as long as you have a good strategy to follow, you'll be able to answer any question you're given. The recording for this sample question is a telephone conversation between a clerk at the inquiry desk of a transport company and a man who is asking for travel information. You are required to fill in the missing information about the cost of fares for bus and train journeys from Bayswater to Harbour City. You will have a short time to prepare before the speaker begins talking. Use this time to familiarize yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. Read the instruction carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you are allowed to write for the answer. Usually, these type of questions require you to write in facts and figures such as times and dates. You will often hear more than one piece of information that could fit the gap though, so do not just write in the first time or date that you hear. Sometimes the speaker will correct their own answer, meaning that the first response they gave was incorrect. For example, the bus leaves at 6.30 p.m. Oh, wait a minute. No, it doesn't. It leaves at 6.40 p.m. So watch out for this tricks. Let's find out some helpful tips. The first is read all of the question instructions carefully, paying attention to any word limit given. Take a moment to understand the rest of the note form. Think about synonyms for words on the form. Use the information given to predict the types of answers you should be listening for. Listen carefully and fill in the missing information. Guess if you need to move or then move on. Let's find out about different strategies to answer. Sometimes between recordings there is an opportunity for a short break. Avoid using this time to check previous answers and instead use this to read ahead and understand the upcoming multiple choice questions. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they are listed in the question. So for this information question you will hear answer 10 first then answer 11 and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in the random order. The columns in the table will have headings that tell you what type of information each column contains. It is essential to read these during your 
preparation time as they will help you to understand the table and give you a big clue as to what sort of information will be contained in the recording. It's an example here in front of you, says day, time, event, venue, ticket price. So these are the different column headings. In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. These are something else that you may be able to predict. If you have time before recording starts, scan the question to identify keywords or phrases that are likely to be replaced by synonyms and think of some that might be used. So this is an example here, words and table and possible synonym. Saturday and Sunday can be also said as weekend and price can also be termed as cost. So pay attention to the vocabulary. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students and some of them will definitely be present in table completion questions So we have, as we have just seen. Now the six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters, addresses. You must be able to recognize them in speech and to write them correctly in your answers. Watch out for distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The first is, the leaflet states that the sculpture exhibition is in Gallery 1, but it is in fact in Gallery 2. The second, the usual price of cinema tickets is £5.50. Pence. However, the cost of attending the special screening of Great Expectations on Monday evening is reduced to £4.50. Pence. Third, the performance of The Magic Flute by Mozart starts at 7pm. No, sorry, the doors open at 7 o'clock, but the curtain goes up at 7.30. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. Adhere to the word limit. Follow the word limit. Read the instruction carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you are allowed to write for the answer. If you write more than one, two or three words as asked, your answer will be marked incorrect even if the information you give is correct. Hyphenated words such as check-in count as a single word. So hey, we are ready with the practice preparation. So let's take a look at a table here and you will hear a recording and based on the recording you have to answer the questions marked as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Beep. You will hear part of the talk about a ship called Yavari. Look at the task, then listen and answer questions 1 to 7. Good evening. Today I'm going to tell you an amazing story about the remarkable ship called the Yavari. If you go to the lake Titicaca in Peru, which lies 3,800 meters above sea level in the Andes Mountains, you can see the Yavari in Punu Bay near to the big hotel. The boat is open to visitors every day and a guided tour is available. 
You can even stay overnight on the boat floating at the world's highest navigable waterway. It's quite an experience. But the Yavari didn't begin its life in Peru when the rotting remains of the ship was found in Puno in 1983. People believed it was built in Glasgow in Scotland in 1905, but it proved to not be the case. It's actually much older and research has shown that it was constructed in the city of Birmingham in England in 1862. The ship, which is mostly made of iron, was ordered by the Bolivian government and constructed to what was known as the pen build method. In other words, the ship was made in England, then taken to pieces and shipped to Peru in small sections, arriving at the port of Erika on the coast. From there, it continued its journey by train around 55 kilometers of the Atacom Desert to the foothills of the Andes, at which point the ship split to 2766 sections, was carried on horseback up to Lake Titicaca, where it was reassembled. The journey from England, taken in total of six years, as well as transporting people and essential supplies to communities around the lake. The Yavari spent most of its life collecting raw materials such as precious metals and wool around the lake and bringing them to the central collection point from where they could be transported down to the coast. Lake Titicaca is so high that no trees grow there and the wood is not readily available. Even so, the ship was driven by a steam engine and needed a source of fuel until 1914 when the diesel engine was fitted. Beep. So here, let's take a look at the answers. The first answer is a big hotel. Now here, even if I don't use the word big, I can just say hotel because I still have two words that I can answer. So the first one is big hotel or just hotel. The second is a guided tour. The third is 1862. Fourth is iron. Fifth is train. Six is wool. And seven is steam or steam engine. So here we can note that the words in brackets are optional. They are correct, but not necessary. So I hope this practice really helps you in answering the table completion questions. So thank you for watching my video. Keep watching more IELTS listening tips videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.